So, of course, the younger lads are in under the top freeze cold. So I'm looking at these pink hands going, <laughs> what are you thinking? Now, you want to see them to stay in them for the first time. <laughs> what <laughs> theory did Daly have with that? Just other than being a magnet. Yeah, just, exactly. It worked for him. I'm just looking, what do you think? So, if you, he, maybe his theory is if you get your hands so cold, when you go in yeah. the cold, it they might warm up. Yeah, yeah. warm up. <laughs> Yet. It took me a long time to get here. Both parents have, have spoken with each other. Another Monday, lads, and another uh, session podcast of giving out about refereeing <laughs> decisions. This yeah. is just becoming a team. We'll get them out of the way anyways. Um, we have a lot of outrage on the mooring, sen- mooring sending off more than anything else. I don't think anyone surely could give out about the Gleason one. No, the no the second yellow was a yellow. First one, you'd say, geez, that was harmless. Yeah. But because the second one was so bad, there's no one giving... Anyway, because I saw a few tweets yesterday about this. Ken McGrath said, I'd be sent <laughs> off on the bus before the match the way the game is going. <laughs> Joke. <laughs> Joke. <laughs> Old Larkin replies to this, at scandalous the way it is now. It's getting more and more like soccer. Players know there's a fair chance a lad will be sending off and they're starting to make the most of things. JJ, um, I'll start with you and then, Michael, you can give your thoughts on it. What, what do you think, lads? Is this just outrage for the sake of outrage or is there something in all this? I think there's genuinely any worry where it's going to go, to be honest with you. If, if, if it stays continued the way it's going, I think referees have to realise how probably a vital decision to send an off is going to be. Um, because the game is so quick and so fast. If you're 14 against 15, it's very, very hard to win a game with that. Um, I think they have to realise that like, uh, sending off, it's not just a decision. It, it's a, it has a bearing on the whole game. It's a bearing for the players, a bearing, bearing for the management, bearing for support going watching the game. And I think they have to be uh, uh, they have to be 100% sure. I don't think they were 100% sure there yesterday, to be honest with you. Over, probably in the Waterford tip match, they weren't, the referee definitely wasn't sure in two of the three. The decent one, yeah, hundred percent that was a, that was the red. He looked at the player before he hit him. Um, I was dirty, from, I was him was, there. It was, it was. I could have been a straight red. Yeah, he, 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 he didn't red. even flick the hurl either. He went in, he went in with two hands on the hurl. Mm. Mm. And looked and hit, at and him and hit him in the head. He knew yeah. exactly what he was Why doing. Why would that he do that at that stage of the game? It was a bizarre, it was a bizarre, on your own a yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, and I, people are saying that could have been a red on its own. It so should have been. That wouldn't yeah. be a red. So I would have wanted to walk. Or I'd what? have no argument. And they know previous either because he's only yeah. on the pitch. Like the, yeah. the tip lad is only on the pitch, so he couldn't have got a belt and um, it couldn't have been retribution. Yeah. Even, you know? You've seen an opportunity so to hit someone. He just he took it like you know, <laughs> know, but he paid a big big price for. It. But the Kevin Moore one, the referee number one didn't see it, and the linesman didn't do him any favors whatsoever. He must have told the referee that he hit him, he struck with the hurl. But when you go back and look at the replay. His arms never went back to no. give him the dig. Well, they no. don't have to go back. They can, yeah, they well, can just jab a, a forward. Jab, but a jab is not a full-on strike. You know the kind of way. Um, right. Kevin Moore, or in fairness, Jason Ford, I'd say he got a small win, but he's back up again. Um, I'd be more critical of Jason if he stayed out on the ground. I'd say he just got... He got I'd say Kevin just hit him in the in sweet yeah. swap. And surprised him. Surprised him, and he was on the ground, but he got back up again. I don't think that was one and Cottle Barrett wasn't it was a yellow card at most that's all it was we'll um, all agree on the Barrett the Barrett was a farcical yeah, one the Moran yeah. one is the more interesting one mm, because yeah. can we not throw back some of the responsibility on Moran Michael because like let's be honest what's he doing it for uh, no I, I wouldn't worry to be honest with you because that happens all over the pitch like you're getting little tussles and there's nothing in it mm. is that no, more of a friendly jab absolutely that's, on. Just, that's, that's just, just getting to know each other yeah, like, yeah exactly there's mm. nothing like Ford was stopping the run he was telling them to go away and that right. was it like, there was nothing no, no malice, not whatsoever. To me, it's more the yellow cards. Will you? They're, they're handing out yellow cards for things that they shouldn't. There should be a warning or two before yellow. It seems that refs are very quick to take out the yellow card. And once you do, it's very easy to get a second yellow for the rest of the game if they're handing mm. out that early in, in a match, you know? Yeah. So, like, for Carl Barrett, the umpire was 80 yards on the pitch. I yeah. don't know how he... How he called it when there was linesmen and the, and the closer umpires never twigged it. So, yeah. that was very unusual. Yeah. And just five sending off yesterday. Like in one Sunday, there was five five reds. It's like you never heard of it. Like all the belts that were given ten years ago, and there was hardly any reds spoken of. And now all of a sudden, the game is at its cleanest, fully, and there's the most cards given. Yeah, so there's a yeah. Is no, it does. It's at the quickest so. as well. Like, yeah, it's at the quickest as well. It yeah. has ever been. You know what I mean? So there's no place for dirtiness no, anymore. So the, the the idea with hurling people is that if it's not a dirty stroke, and you know what a dirty stroke mm. is, you're all in agreement that Gleason's was pretty dirty. Yeah. You know the chop down is pretty dirty. Mm. At least I know that. Yeah. But it, they seem to be given reds for ones that are not dirty strokes, and like you said, they are impacting the games because yeah. fourteen of fifteen. It's a, they, should they be saying? 
hold off on sending someone off unless it's a clear and yeah. obvious yeah. dirty stroke. Yeah. But that's what you want. Yeah. That doesn't look like the way the, the no, refs are going refereeing it. Ref, completely, completely different. But you know by the reaction, reaction of the players, um, Gleeson knew he was going to get red. He knew he was shooting against it. Didn't argue whatsoever. Yeah. Cottle Barrett turned around to the linesman and said, what, why, what are you sent off? Same with Kevin Moran. You know when you do a dirty stroke when you deserve a rate. Every player knows that themselves. You know by the player's reaction. When they react, they say, what was that for? I just can't believe that. Give me a red card. You know the referees are getting it wrong. Yeah. Um, so, look, the onus going back on, on the referees again now. And, look, we're, we're again, we're giving out about them. But they're not helping themselves at all. They're backing themselves into, into awkward, awkward decisions. But, again, they're going towards... Um, kind of ruining the game now at the moment to be honest with you because it's just plead with them just to sit down and think about a red card is a big big decision on, on, on the impact of the whole game so just kind of don't be card don't be mm. trigger happy now you know what I mean yeah. just and think the about the slap of the hurl as well like if two hurls clash like for the Carl Barrett one everyone heard a slap of a hurl around the pitch and we knew it wasn't on the ball because you could easily hear it from watching the telly so it sounded like an awful belt but whatever way the two of them collided mm. There was nothing in it, Willie, but it, sound, it sounded awful. And then one of the lads on the ground, so straight away they're thinking it, that someone's the top someone. yeah, someone, yeah. someone, someone's yeah. Th- someone. Look, There was nothing in that. And he the game was destroyed then, Willie. He, he yeah. gave him a little petulant elbow on the yeah, way past. Yeah, yeah. And that was it. But this, this is the thing. Like, I keep, I'm going to throw it back and just play devil's advocate here and say, right, now that players know what referees are like, are the whole traditional Kevin Moore and get out of my way are players going to have to say, here, I'm just going to stop doing that? And, you know, not put yourself in that position. To, or Austin Gleeson, the first yellow, a little flick on the mm. knee, was nothing really mm. in it. The ref, the, whoever, who was, who was running through with the ball, whoever it was anyways, didn't even flinch. It was so yeah. Yeah. playful. But can, John, can, John. Can, yeah. can players not say now, it was John McGrath, John was McGrath, it? Yeah. Some, can players not say now, here, I'm just going, that, that worked before. I'm just not going to do that anymore. And now there'll be no controversy about this. And I think Kevin Moore was just, Kevin Moore, like, Walford had the ball. And Kevin Moore was trying to get out past Jason Ford to get down, probably into the pocket with, with Stephen McKee because he's looking for the, because Kevin was flying down that wing. But you have to sidestep him now because the, the way I, that that's... So he probably thought he was doing that. Do you know what I mean? He didn't think he was going to get sent off for what he'd done. Do you know what I mean? In his yeah. thinking, but now he that was he knows, going with letter of the law. You know now that he knows, he'll know that that's going to be... See, anything with the hurley like that... But if a manager told you before that game, Willie, he said, look, you can't do that. I said, Jesus, I'm only kind of getting yeah. them out of the way to, to yeah. move, to kind of jump away from it and then move out into the space. If the manager told me this before the game, said, look, you kind of, say, what do you mean? I can't touch my heart so ever. Like, you know, it's in contact sport. You're not going to win. So you have to keep that relevant. Now, fair enough, Kevin Moore, if he does it again, that's his own fault. The onus on him at the moment. But telling people to go out before the game and not be physical in a physical game, it's just madness, to be honest. Yeah. And it's know. not the refs that only go, because all the refs are reffing the same way. So it's not one particular ref. It's what they're being told to do. So the organisation has to look at it and say, the games are going to be ruined in the Summer Cup Championship if they keep this up. be interesting so to see. They, the they, theory they, is that they do it in the league. They, and have, they, to, they have to change it because it's just it's not working. And it was, the spectacle of the game was gone completely yesterday because three men gone from a pitch, just the amount of space that's yeah. left on the pitch yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah. And lad, like, the game just filtered. Well, that's the thing. We're not, even going, to, yesterday. We're not even going to talk about that game because what's the no, point? No, because it, that, brutal. It, it, that, the sending off ruined it to yeah. the point at least they'll focus on Galway and Cork, which there was yeah. one sending off. Now, we'll just cover this sending off before we move on. Surely we're agreeing Robbie O'Flynn needed yeah. the goal. Yeah. Lads, yeah. He got him in a... Se- if he, let, <laughs> sorry, sorry now, but if he, he kept holding the hurl to really slingshot him, if he'd let go of the hurl that wouldn't have been as bad, yeah. would it? He got yeah. the hurl around his yeah. neck and, and, and kept hold of it. Hold it. <laughs> now, he could yeah. have taken his head off. Yeah. Yeah. Probably that had, the, had the, whole, the hurl hell as well, you know what I mean? But in that kind of a, a circumstance, he looks a lot worse than what he's mm. uh, guaranteed to... Ah, uh, he refused to was, criticise no, any no, it, was, it was a red. It was a red. It was a red. It wasn't... It, like, in regarding he got up and went on and played the game it looked yeah, a lot worse it looked like the head yeah. was going to be took <laughs> off but when, as a defender when your hurl is when the forward hurl is over your head you can actually grab it and bring it back as well like you know what yeah. I mean right. so you, um, you make it look a lot worse than what it was look it, it was a high tackle and mm. he gave the, the referee decision to make you know, and he made the right, right decision fairness it was very right hard but it, it wasn't as bad as, as what it looked like because Tackle like that will always get a big go out of the crowd, you know what I mean? But the <laughs> oh, players yeah. always hops up and yeah. runs back in position, you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah, look, you'd probably do more worse. damage with a strike, but yeah, at the yeah. same time, Jesus, yeah, it, 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 it yeah, just yeah. looked it looked terrible. How did Brian Hogan save Jamie Barron's shot in the first early in the first half and then let Stephen Bennett shot in? 
It doesn't make yeah. any sense. What it just hit it? his horn and yeah. around, didn't it? Like, <laughs> he was that was yeah. a brilliant save, lads. Brilliant. That was a great save. Yeah. It was a great save. And I think it's just, he couldn't move. He was on the ground and his arm was stuck. And he was it hoping. just hit the horn. Yeah. yeah, he hit the horn and went in, but he's hoping now. He's just, he was on the ground, he couldn't get back up again in time. You know, yeah. it was just, unfortunately, now you'll be hoping you're one year full back, then now we'll get you out of jail, then, but it bounced the wrong land. Yeah. Tip he actually made a hero out of O'Keefe. Like, he had a great game, Stephen O'Keefe and goal, but the shots, shot selection was poor, Willie. Really. All from hip to shoulder height, easiest for the goalkeeper. Yeah. Like that ground was soaking yesterday. Every ball should be an off slip. Yeah. And is, was it just a muck that fooled him then for the Bennett one? That was a slippery yeah. little. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, there was nothing in that one. But just, um, I just thought like Tipper normally very cute shooting was, and I thought that let them down because they, they could have had three or four goals yesterday quite easily. Use the ground, use the surface. Like yeah. Bounce the goalies hate it. The ball could go absolutely anywhere. On the wet day, yeah. yeah. So because poor Anthony Nash made a brilliant save from brilliant Flynn save, early, yeah. but the, he got it on the hand. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Yeah, and we yeah. were talking about the numb hands, yeah. lads. Imagine. Because he yeah. knew nothing about that. No, it was just, just hit, hit straight at him. And he tried to take the puck out and had to go down on one knee. I was like, oh, God, imagine. <laughs> we, were freezing day up in Salt Hill as well. <laughs> we were playing a freezing cold day in Port Leash before, and, and Anthony Daly says to the younger lads, I used to put my hands under a freezing cold tap for, for 10 minutes before going out and sort you out. <laughs> Who at said that? Anthony Daly. So of course the younger lads are in under the tap freezing cold. But I'm looking at these pink hands going, <laughs> what are you thinking? Now you want to see them to stay to them for the first 10 minutes. <laughs> what theory did Daly have at that? Other than being a madman. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, it worked for him. I'm just looking, what do you think? So if you, he, maybe his theory is if you get your hands so cold, when you go out yeah. the cold, it might warm up. Yeah. 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 warm up. <laughs> I wasn't going um, near it. I'll tell you that much. Because we were only talking here last week with JJ or the week before about yeah. your hands going so yeah. numb that JJ would have to just hand pass the ball because uh, you wouldn't. Yeah. Be, you'd be doing well to strike on it. And that's how I warmed up before most cold days. Just about a hundred hand passes before, just just to get the, the hands blood warm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, right. but it's it's not easy. Your hands be freaking freezing, uh-huh. especially with a bad belt in the first few minutes. Yeah, no, it definitely. Well, Jason Flynn got a brilliant goal there just after that, though. It was, it was actually brilliant by Concanon, yeah. who yeah. the easiest thing for a fella like him, who's not a guaranteed starter, was to tap yeah. over yeah, that ball yeah, left hander, yeah. and he went for the juggler. Mm. And that that's not that could be a message from Shane O'Neill. It's not something you'd associate with Galway, who run up huge points tallies, but maybe not goals. Yeah, that natural kind of uh, corner forward kind of instinct. Like, like when any goal, corner forward, yeah, I would yeah, have thought. When, when a goal scoring opportunity is on now, and it's, it's what you, exactly what you said, easy option, take a point, and you, you have a point on, on in your, your column there as well yeah. at the end of the game. But he's seen an opportunity, and it's a great flick over now. He made the goal for him perfectly, like, you know. But, but he cut inside first. Yeah, do you yeah, know? Yeah, he, he kind of jinked around the, the car corner back then as well. And little flick as well it wasn't an easy flick either because something like that off the hurl as well yeah. it could be blocked down by the full back or else he timed it perfectly and the loop of the ball was perfect in Jason Finn's hand and yeah. great finish as well not to be fair yeah. Yeah. Stephen Bennett had a lovely flick as well for, class, for the yeah. point right. Jamie Barron point who Jamie, Jamie Barron was excellent we'll talk about him in the last part but we're seeing loads of skill like that Michael and like it is true and I do accept the point that the hurling people are making that these are the two coming off the greatest Munster Championship Argley ever seen, the greatest Leinster Championship we've ever seen the following year. Yeah. Brilliant all earned semi finals. Uh, well, the final the year before, not so much this year with the sending off. And now referees are clamping down on stuff yeah. that's not there. No, it's, there's, that's there's, not a, there's nobody clamouring about the violence in the game because no. there, is, there isn't any. Said, it's the cleanest it's ever been, Willie. Like, so it's it's like they're trying just to fix a, a problem yeah. that's not there. Yeah. I don't know why they're making up these, these things. It's, like, you can't take the physicality out of hurling. People love a good hit as much as they love a score. And it and gets the crowd behind you. So you just can't touch it. Like, it and there's nothing to touch in the game. And regarding the flicks, like, you've seen the brick flick for years. You know, hmm. like Whenever you're chasing them, you just couldn't get a hook. It's so effective. Yeah. I think lads are going to be trying it more and more because lads are, are finding it more, harder to shake a fella behind them. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're flicking the ball in front of you, it, it works and you can't hook it. Right. So I think lads are going to be working on that more and more in training. And uh, Noel McGrath had a lovely little backhanded flick on the yeah. round for, w- there, yeah. for one of the... Que- Queely, is that his name? His, uh, his, uh, he got five from play. I'll talk about him in performance Quirk. at the weekend as well. Young Quirk, yeah. Mm. Dylan, yeah. Dylan Quirk. Mm. Um, a lovely little... It was on the ground and it just a little backhand there, yeah. flick up. Yeah. Jeez, like there is there's serious <laughs> skill in the game. Like I mean, And obviously, Con Cannon's goal was brilliant. A brilliant ball by Conor Cooney. Yeah. And like he def- he looks like he can hurl Con Cannon. Like, I mean, he looks like... We, I think we talked about him last year, though, and he didn't really push no, no. So he started you know, again. He started the year really well last year, and then yeah. sort of faded. Like he, he's hurling great, and he's huge, loads of energy around the place. But again, you seen Connor Cooney with that pass. That was a great pass. For yeah. Yeah. it opens and everything up. We don't see enough of that. Other the Limerick the do that a lot. Yeah. yeah, and I think you're right. That's a new element we're seeing in that Galway team now. And their work rate in the far line really impressed me. At one stage, Con Cannon and Niall Bork chased the Cork lads right across the pitch, won the ball back, and got a point. And without Coon, uh, Joe Canning there, you didn't really mm. see that from the Galway forwards much. So now, without him, like if you're adding him into that forward line, 
Like no one's really talking about Galway too much, really. So and no. I was really mm. impressed with how they worked the ball in the forward line and the back line. Yesterday, yeah, so. but we'll talk about a, a yeah. b- about them a bit in part two. They've used thirty one players throughout the league, yeah. Yeah. so it's really experimentation stuff. So like I mean, they've a home game then against Tip to make the knockout. So I'd say they'd be mad to get into that. Did you see J- Shane O'Donnell's control? Oh, over the head. Oh, I, really. I just looked at that, that and savage. I went, "That's one of the most <laughs> underrated." pieces of brilliance I've ever seen yeah, he didn't see, he couldn't see that ball no, until no. it actually came over his Literally, head Literally, yeah, he had a split second to control split the ball second. to even know where it was going to go yeah. 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 usually corner forward just going to let it over his head they had a bounce and yeah. then to yeah. turn on the bounce you know what I mean we had the, the skill the, the composure to control it over yeah. his head it's absolutely phenomenal you the, over the yeah. Yeah. he's always in the back of his head you're only hoping it's a corner back he won't score a goal you're looking <laughs> over I was only chatting to Alan Nolan the Dublin keeper this morning and he said I said what about that touch and he said I was running out to I thought the ball was going to go away <laughs> and just to get I said I was in shock when he touched it it was <laughs> such a great touch like, you know, yeah. like over his head with under pressure Mm, I was surprised they didn't true. highlight that on the yeah. League Sunday last yeah. night because yeah, I just brilliant. saw that and went, how the hell did he? <laughs> yeah. Because it was such a long clearance. He was running this way with his back to it. Yeah. Yeah, and suddenly well, then yeah. he puts out the hurl and he knows yeah. where yeah. it is. Yeah. <laughs> and there had to be an <laughs> element of luck to that, lads. That's like ah, literally he, like Bruce Lee's sort of player, though. He's, 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 he's sort of like Keen Lynch. Such. He has these brilliant touches mm-hmm. like that you just never expect. I love that. He has that in his locker, you know. With ball too, you're not going to Yeah, exactly. Jesus, no. I know, fair enough. I was some critical of Shane O'Donnell that was that was breathtaking mm. so Dublin disappointing uh, Michael like I mean uh, Maddie Kenny was talking last night in, in the interview after mm. the game and he said that oh well the league wasn't a priority I'm not quoting him directly I'm paraphrasing him yeah. saying the league wasn't a huge priority we wanted to develop our panel and we've done that I don't believe that for a second no and as he said it, I was going through the panel and I said like you're going through fines for the league and Ronan Hayes has been really good for forward I think he's a really good find Apart from that, there's no one else that's going to really start in Championship who he's tried. So I can't see like where Borks he's coming from. That, like, no, because like always, ball winning is Dublin's problem. Hmm. Like they cannot win primary possession yeah. from a book out. Now Donald Burke scored four yesterday. He's really good, but the half forward line is going to be Danny Sutcliffe, Liam Rush, and Keeney. Like, Will really? Keeney, Keeney, when's Keeney back? <laughs> now in the next few weeks. He's so he has, <laughs> he has, a, new, he has a new. He has a newborn now, so he, he wants to go back training. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he's going back now in the next few weeks. And Rush and only Rush, came on and after six straight away. Caught a great ball, yeah. right? Went by three lads and handed it off. That's just the Dublin need ball winners, and they haven't got it. Will Crummy still up there, no? See, Crummy won't. Crummy's gone for two months. Yeah, yeah. broken collarbone, so he's going to be back. Well, collarbone week, is gone. He's going to be back a week before championship. So. Like Ronan yeah. Hayes gives you that option now. We don't yeah, need Rushy up there. Yeah. So like yeah. Rushy can come out to the half hour line. You're not losing the ball when in the foot yeah. forward. Right. Freeze has been Dublin's big problem. Like last week, Paul Ryan is normally re- really good free taker. Missed six. Yeah. Donald Burke missed four yesterday. Did he? Ushin O'Rourke hasn't missed, but he was out injured. So you have to play Ushin O'Rourke. You have to play your best free taker in the foot forward line. So the Ushin O'Rourke, Hayes, and a another and Trollier. Like Trollier's got Dillon. a he's yeah. got a goal in every game. Yeah. Every game. But like yeah. yesterday's game, Dublin forwards got three, only three of them scored. Shoot it doesn't make your team there no. then. He's not no. playing well, he's, he's, he's taking well. taken yeah, off he's a not, lot. He's yeah. not playing well, he's he's not a free taker. And I just think like Oshin O'Rourke actually has been playing well from play as well as scoring freeze. So I think he has to be in there as the free taker. None of the other forwards can take freeze for Dublin. So right. It has to be a free taker putting that full forward line. I think yeah. Shute has to be the one to, to be fair. It's like Keeney and Rush just both beef up that forward yeah, line a yeah. lot. Now, they, they and Sutcliffe has the legs to, to carry around there as well. Absolutely, like and, and he's good in the air. So yeah, that's a yeah. ball winning half forward line. Yeah, now you're asking 36 year old to come in. But is the that, forward, that is, that's not the way they puck out though, is it? No, they were going they short. Have. That stopped. Right, they weren't. They were losing the ball in the half mm. back line and, and full back line. So they went direct directly yesterday, and the first half they won 10 out of 18 puckouts. Second half, I'm not sure what the stat was, but it's just not good enough. The ball winners aren't there. Right. Now, Burke's very good. He, mm. He'd be unlucky to miss out. So yeah. He could fight for... He a, could, a, a, yeah. a, but he's a, a squad. Forward. Yeah, he'll get in 15, 20 yeah, minutes. Yeah, Davey Kyo has been a good find. He, yeah. he, he's there as well. Like There is players to come in, but midfield as well is a huge problem. Like Clare got five points from play yesterday from midfield. And Dublin aren't chipping in from scores from mm. the middle, and you need two or three points every game from midfield from one yeah. of them. You know, so full back line is settled. Like they were a great full back line. Uh, uh, yeah, they do, Smith, apart from Kenny, Kenny got three solid. goals. So no one else yeah, gets goals yeah. in Dublin. Like, like it's very tight now. Yeah, they really do struggle. So like back line for Dublin isn't a problem. It's no. midfield up. So right, you'll have Rushy to come back. You have Keeney to come back. Danny's been in and out with injury. They need Troller though. In All the injury time. free, yeah, exactly, they? exactly. Yeah, so they, they've been picking up in main goal scorer really. Like if, if you have them there, it's a solid enough Dublin team. But mm. Rain McBride has hurled well for Dublin midfield throughout the year. 
he'll be the one midfielder who's going to start and you have to find a partner for him so that's the half funny we're working in Parnell Park though Kenny and, and, and Parnell yeah. Park are physical and there's no point in any teams panicking like I mean no, it, it, absolutely it, not Liam Sheedy said it after the game yesterday it's March the 1st yeah, 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 and yeah. we've just heard we're very it. reactive <laughs> every week like, you know the yeah, it is it's yeah, hard yeah, not to yeah. be and I do find yeah. it well especially Pat Spillane the football yeah. he almost decides a team's future based yeah. on a game in a hurricane do you know what I mean so like so when you're looking forward to that Dublin panel it's a good team that will yeah they will have a good start and that's what Crummy mentioned Crummy what about Paul Crummy? Is he, he a brother of yeah, Chris? Yeah, he's, he's Chris's younger brother. Got three great points yeah. at half-back. Mm. Normally, he'd play, probably play half-forward for his club. But half-back, he, he can definitely hurl half-back. He's like Chris. I play Chris back in the half-back line now come championship because you won't need him up there. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 but he could he, play midfield he, and he solve he that yeah, problem. Yeah, he could actually yeah. play midfield, yeah, because he, he, he loves getting up the pitch and he's very good under a high ball. Yeah, so. and he's a leader too, right? Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. Strong, yeah. He's physical, so... Um, yeah, he'd definitely be an option midfield, will he? So, But he'd only be back a week before maybe two weeks before championship so right. depends on which hurling they can get into them before well then. that's the thing and I suppose with the collarbone you can't practice your no, striking exactly. too much right? so no, it's no. probably the worst yeah. injury like yeah. in, like I suppose a leg injury you can still keep your upper yeah. body yeah, loose and absolutely no, no. on the wall you could be on the wall ball but yeah. you can't yeah. even do a wall ball no. then no nothing so yeah so it's a disaster we'll see, I suppose see he'll be back sports. at some stage yeah so there was a bit of news this morning the relegation match so it's Westmead and Carlo as we know mm. they tossed for home advantage and Westmead won the toss so they get um they get uh, home advantage. So that's, uh, I think that's next weekend. Um, just quickly on the Congress, lads. So it was a good day for hurling. The black card didn't come yeah, in. Yeah, we talked God. about that too much. 80, <laughs> 82% of delegates um, voted against it. So they had their heads screwed on. And to be fair, it was a fair old campaign everybody yeah. did. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was on the same board, wasn't it? <laughs> like you're almost uh, thinking that the game is completely gone yeah. if this ever comes in. <laughs> didn't um, all go watch a game anymore if no, it came in. No, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> got it. The Leinster Championship increased to six teams. Yeah. That looks like a positive development yeah, very too. Very good, yeah. yeah Absolutely. Very good. The we spoke about this. It was the last year we spoke about it, or the year before we spoke about it. It just made no sense where it was, you know, no. and you're trying to develop uh, counties and all that kind of stuff, and they're up to level one year, and then they're, they're back down, and yeah. it makes it two years come up, and yeah. you might have a group of players that are able to compete, but how are they going to compete if they go back down to come back up? And then yeah. it's two years gone your career before they come back up to compete again, you know, so I think that's a positive, positive mm. um it definitely is no. it, def- it definitely is what did, what did you make of Eddie giving up the home advantage to get the dry run in Nolan Park for the championship see he's smart enough <laughs> <laughs> now, we're away to Kil- we're away to Kil- Kenny like yeah. the Moor Park was playable I'd say he just went look it's a dead it's a the footballers played on it yesterday yeah. Yeah. it's a dead rubber game really because we're safe yeah. we're playing them in the championship let's just do our full routine that yeah. we'll do that yeah. day exactly. that makes perfect sense oh, doesn't 100%, it yeah. at least you get something out of the game then you know like, in a way, like yeah. you can get your routines your timings before the game yeah. where you're going to eat and get the players juice exactly. the surroundings really more than that that's what it is you know it's, it's, yeah, good, good stroke now. good see, stroke yeah. see if it pays off during the summer <laughs> <laughs> we're coming for you <laughs> but I was saying I was saying last, he's worried by his I own. was saying last Thursday bring him to more park pump more water onto him yeah. <laughs> 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 that might suit and us lock the gates <laughs> lock the gates so the sideline was defeated as well the two points I was surprised this was uh, defeated as strongly 77% yeah. of delegates voted against 2% it was Kilkenny delegate Connor uh, Den- Denif Denif, Denif. Yeah. not great at that I should have probably proofread that he said it's a great skill but it's one that's executed by a player completely unchallenged so we don't think it should be worth two points <laughs> Jesus Christ <laughs> right? so well, as long as you're not a getting crowd flamed, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <tough crowd. laughs> you need to be so, four less hanging out here yeah. before you get two points <laughs> then I'm thinking who is your sideline specialist do you not have one at the moment oh, TG. T- can, does TJ yeah. stick yeah. over oh, sideline TJ's brilliant yeah. Yeah. right okay well then yeah so I'm not coming up with that theory I was surpri- were you surprised that it was that strong against because I, I would be probably in favour in that now I suppose a game being won you're a, you're a point up and a sideline is scored for two to beat you to it, that would yeah. there'd be probably be well, the excitement though you'd have yeah. up to it. Like it's like a, a long range free really more than that and is he going to score or is it not because it's no guarantee you, you will score you'll get probably 80% of the time you might get the distance alright but you get the accuracy as well it's, it's vital but I suppose what they're afraid of really everyone <laughs> going for shots all the time and yeah. the ball is dead too, too much, much time, yeah you know slow I mean? it down so, yeah, yeah. And then it's a lot to be said for a little short. Um, we won the league final one day because TJ hit to Richie Hogan, back to TJ, and he slapped it over the bar. You know, a bit of skill like that yeah. probably would take away from the game then because he'll end up going for the two points rather than play the ball into, yeah. into the. I team completely advantage, agree you know with you. Know I mean? Like, I mean, that's, that's true. I didn't really think of that. So, say you have a, a sideline on the halfway line and Joe Canning's in corner forward yeah. or full forward line. Yeah. Joe, come on. Well, now yeah. there's a big routine that he and comes then it goes out wide and you're. Yeah, yeah, like yeah you've you slowed. Yeah, it's it's diff- oh. It goes over, it's a great score, but it's exactly. very deflating for yeah. a team of supporters. If it goes wide, and the game has been slowed yeah. down, yeah. and that's yeah. what nobody wants. Everyone no. wants it to 
flow, yeah. yeah. So exactly, yeah. No, so that that makes sense. Why seventy seven percent? And the final one, lads, that was defeated, which will suit the two of you down to the absolute <laughs> ground. Is club games are not not going to be seventy minutes? They're going to stick at sixty. <laughs> <laughs> You're dead right there. And he's trying to bring you back to fifty. <laughs> <no>? <laughs> well, the junior I'm playing yeah. now, first half will do me right. So like, I mean, so imagine seventy minutes of junior. Yeah, that'd be lads. tough. There, no, right. yeah, that's the right. You'll be gone for a week. <laughs> 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 okay, an a drinking, a van, <laughs> drinking van on the junior team. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll come back in part two and we'll talk about Galway Cork. So Kieran Kingston was ta- was uh, interviewed after the game, lads, and he says, "When you go down to fourteen men, it's always challenging. The wind will never win or lose it for you or lose the game for you. They closed it out that bit better. We struggled in the last ten minutes. We just seemed to totally run out of legs." Was it the running out of legs? Was it the sending off? Was it the cork lacking bottle? Was you know all these things are said about cork? What do you put it down to, JJ? To look a bit of both or a bit of uh, every every single one of them. Yeah, it's very very hard when you go down to fourteen to kind of to count kind of counteract it. Or, um, especially Galway, they use the ball so well as well. Like you know what I mean. And it's tricky you now. You need kind of individuals standing up really and going above and beyond on the team to get you over the line. You know, but. Look, it had a few individual players, but as a team, I think you're talking about your defensive unit. I think they defend individually rather than defend as a unit as well. Yeah. Like if their man is bet, there's no one covering. Um, see Bill Cooper there in the second half; he got turned inside out. You're hoping your full back or your centre back is cutting across. That was there. for Concan- the Concannon's yeah. goal. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. because uh, Jackie showed that on League Sunday last night yeah. and. I was thinking, right, okay, that's fine. But there was actually a de- covering. De- there was a spare Ross defender who, who only, no, he only rushed out at the very last yeah, minute. Yeah. Why did he not spot that Steve danger Moore, earlier and double up on him? Yeah, maybe so he's been over cautious. Yeah, maybe or something. Of, I don't want my forwards, yeah. my man scoring. You know, and you can't have that. Well, he looked like he was a spare man. Like I know, I think Jackie yeah. was making the point that you you should leave your man a good yeah. defender if he's not a threat and go across and help. But this fella looked like he was like sw- in a sweeping position and hadn't come out to snuff the danger. Yeah. But that's that's kind of before the game. The six backs should get together. If I go, you cover my man, yeah. and then the cornerback cover the full back. Half back covers the cornerback. We should all know what we're doing within that situation. If that arises, then we know exactly. I go, I know my man's covering, and go again. That needs to be kind of communicated in addressing before before the you go out in the field. Whatever six backs it is, I don't care if it's your first day or your hundred day out there. It doesn't make a difference. If you don't communicate as a back, you need your six, your other five backs working with you. If you if you move, you need someone pulling co- covering in your man there as well. It's not my man, my position. Yeah. My man won't score. It's grand. That look great in the paper tomorrow. It can't be like that. If it's like that, then there's no communication or, or no team spirit within that back group. And right. to see you with Cork, you're very you're allowed hurl against Cork all the time. Reason we are allowed hurl against Cork is that to get loose ball, but to get loose ball because if we get past one defender you have a shot at the goal. It's always high scoring games within them. You see them during yeah. the summer as well. They're always high scoring because any team that comes against them, the forward knows, I beat my man one on one, I'll get a score. Do you know what I mean? It's if you go against Kilkenny for Agam's sake, or Tipperary or anything like that, or Limerick for Agam's sake at this stage, you meet you go past one, Limerick lads in your face straight away, tip lads in your face straight away. Even if, if they don't get near you, you're they're five yards are coming to to attack you. So that might put your eye off and you might hit the ball wide. Against Cork, you just beat one player, you have a shot at goal, mm-hmm. point, come back out again. You right. know, that's what they have to stop. And it, coming to championship. It, it, it's not it's yeah. not really being rectified at the moment, we, you know. We talk sometimes in in Gaelic football is it, at what at what point do you leave your man to help somebody else? Do you yeah. know if it is all paired off <laughs> and yeah. like the good defenders know how to do it? Corks definitely don't seem to know how to no. do it. But like I mean, if that's uh, if that's um, Cooper in the right half back position, Tim O'Matney should be close enough if he's holding mm-hmm. the centre. That would be his job yeah. normally. Do you know? It's, the, it's yeah. the lad beside you that's supposed to help you out. Now, it can't be the other wing back coming yeah. across to help you out. Well, I think Bill Cooper actually. Uh, don't want to pick on Bill Cooper. He got caught out yesterday as well. Mm-hmm. Adrian too. He got, got a ball in the first half with acres of space in the middle of the pitch, and it wasn't a surprise ball. It was a ball worked up by Galway. I think he was caught in two minds looking after his full back line and going out the pitch chasing his man. In that situation, you have to go with your man. You have to chase him out the pitch and leave that space. Yeah. Jerry Cunningham's involved at Cork and his mantra with us was very much so your man, your responsibility, wherever he goes, you go. And it's it's very hard as a unit to defend that because forwards now they just 
but they make so much space for each other. But that's so. You, you uh, can't that's, look after each other. I think you know? that's what you might tell under 12s just mm. to get them marking yeah, their men tighter. Yeah. We struggled with it as well, to be honest. But with sure, that's it. Deke high runs can ruin that. Absolutely. Mm. And, and if one defender gets turned, there's 30 yard space of running yeah. into, before anyone gets to them, you know, because everyone's so spread out. So it opens up a defence completely. So you could see Cork struggled with a big time yesterday and they have right. showed the years it's so. interesting that that's his motto because yeah. that seems so outdated to me because even from puck outs so you can dictate complete great puck out strategies based on the fact yeah. that you know they're go- your decoy runs yeah. are going to be followed yeah. and create yeah. space mm. you have to do both really you have to man mark at particular times but you have to hold your position at different times as well and as a, a good defender will know when to do which you know that kind of way you can't just say you go to your man 100% of the time it can't be because that's you're, just nonsense. you're letting someone else out yeah. and you can't yeah. hold your position every 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 yeah. every time the ball comes down as well so you have to know when to go and know when to stay simple as that you know and unfortunately at the moment they don't seem to be kind of grasping the situation they're going one on one and that's it's great if, if it works out but it take one ball for you to cut in, yeah. in the full back line and then it's a goal straight away you know that kind yeah. of way so it's it's tricky it's just especially you feel against Cork it's against the wind Galway worked that goal so there's no need for Cork half for, half back line to be up the field because Galway has poked the ball down the field it's going to hold up in the wind anyway they're going to score from 40 yards in so there's no point in the, the half back line saying 45 yards out from the goal they should be back under 30 yards in front of their goal so that's where the score near is going to be but they weren't there weren't, weren't there to plug the holes you see and yeah. that's, that's where it is there's too much holes in, 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 the, in the court defence at the it moment you know d- there definitely is and like I mean look at this so <coughs> they were beaten yesterday on March the 1st they're not out in the championship until May the 10th that's yeah. a 10 week gap yeah. 10 weeks yeah, and he won't have him for April and he doesn't know his team does no. he well he doesn't know his, his half back line no. he's completely up, in, yeah. up for grabs yeah. and his half forward line seems to be completely up in yeah. the air as well but like for the likes of Bill Cooper now, that's where the, the, an extra game or two yeah. the world difference would make Dublin are in the same boat now what do you do for them 10 weeks Like for, you're, you're going to have 4 weeks of hard training slog yeah. and fitness work then you release the clubs and then you're back for two weeks before a championship. Mm. It's really not an ideal situation yeah. without sure. competitive hurling. You're playing good teams at this time of year. Exactly. Too, in, in later on in the league. And when it comes out of the, the, the league basis of the league, it gets competitive. You know what I mean? You're in a quarter final, semi final. You want to go on and mm. win it then. And you're playing a higher level of team. And people are a lot fitter there. You're marking as well. Have a last two or three months of pure hardship underneath their belt. And they're coming into a bit of hurling now as well. So... Yeah, it's, it's tricky now. It's a hard to negotiate that for a, for a management team, really, as well. Yeah. Like, you know. but it, like, I mean, you've got the, the Walsh Cup in Leinster, you've the Munster League, whatever. Mm. That's the time for all this Bill Cooper wing yeah. back, Bill Cooper centre yeah. back, Tim O'Matney wing back, Tim O'Matney centre back, fucking Sean O'Leary Hayes wing back, corner mm. back. <coughs> right, you get into the league then, first two games, Grant, maybe try another one. Surely for the last three games, that's you're settling on your Leinster Championship team. Absolutely, but yeah. that was the way it always used to be. Or yeah. is it gone so experimental now that maybe they're hoping to make the knockout and then decide on the team in those That's, games we're going to see the championship teams now for all the teams left for quarter final semi final yeah, close and, and, and that gets closer to championship level playing as well you know so Dublin and Cork are going to miss out on this now the championship level hurling before championship it's a big it's loss a big, to big, them. big yeah. loss for both teams and they're the two teams that probably need it more than any other yeah. because the other teams have more established teams than, the, than Dublin and Cork at the moment so like I would have been all out like I heard like unlike Matty Kenny I would have been all out to get as far as you can mm-hmm. to try I don't believe Matty Kenny not, I think not that's just making excuses, excuses. Like, but, yeah. but like I'd be all out to get as far as you can and even get that winning mentality under your belt which yeah. they're struggling both teams are struggling for at the moment yeah so like, mental wise and physical wise it's, it's, it's a bad bad draw for the two of them well that's it and then you have young uh, Downey Full back, we said, geez, he looks like a great yeah. finder. And then he's out wing back and he's back centre back. Yeah. yeah, he was and injured like, there yesterday, wasn't he? Yeah. I don't think he wasn't yeah, there yesterday, wasn't but like, yeah. there you go. Like, where, where, where do these lads play? Yeah, outside yeah. of Colum Spillane, who you look at, will have a corner tied up. Yeah, will, you know, will they stick with Mark Cole in midfield? I, I back wing back as well. Yeah. You know, Again, there's too much world back Here's then. the goal. They'll probably play a challenge match and they'll try that out. It'll work in a challenge yeah. match. Mm. You know, well, I wouldn't say try Coleman because we know what, how good he yeah. is. But what they could do is they could, instead of deciding a team on competitive games, they'll d- end up deciding their team on challenge games, yeah. which yeah. are a complete joke. Yeah. So or someone go could go back sh- to last year's team. You know, they can yeah. that's what it could very easily happen. So it know, is so. a big. It's a big. Uh, it's definitely a big la- mm. a land for them. And what? they were in that game, lads. They were. They were. They went ahead. After 50 minutes with the wind, yeah. mm. and they went. To, they were only a point behind after 64 minutes with yeah. the wind. That's not good enough, no, really, is it? Absolutely not. And it, you don't want to come championship bully and have questions in players' heads. Like Cork are going to arrive at the championship now in the tent and say, "Geez, I haven't played here all year." You're going to have certain players saying, "I haven't really played here much," or you know, and that's the last thing you want. You want to have fully prepped players going into the championship. It's, it's difficult enough as it is. 
And that's going to happen in these in these panels. That lads are going to be playing in positions where they've probably played two or three games. Yeah. Which is big plus. <laughs> the only big plus now is Shane Kingston full far for, yeah, for he's Con. Been he's yeah. been very, very good now. He brought, again, brought the farm on from UCC there as well. And he's a threat all the time. He kind of gets in. He runs at defenders, which is a nightmare for a full back. But you say well. he's flying at a champ. He's a championship yeah, pace. Yeah, okay, so at the moment. Yeah, from, but the he's from the sorry Sigerson, sorry Les, I'll wash my mouth out if it's given. <laughs> yeah, but he's taking his chance though. You know, the kind of yeah. he was on and off, and now whereas he probably had to pick an order of Con- Conor Lehan at the moment. You know, whereas the start of the year we said Conor Lehan would have been on before him, but judging how far now Shane Kingston is racking up a couple of scores and he's, he's winning frees as well, and he's been very very direct and winning the ball himself. So. He's a big plus now for for Cork now. Yeah, no, he definitely he definitely is. And like I mean, the, the the thing just about the defending, like I mean, JJ, when you were on the Kilkenny team, one of your defenders might have changed every year. But mm. the rest, of, how can you get uh, how can you get an understanding mm. and get to know? Like for example, you would know when Brian Hogan was going to come across and cover. You know whoever was playing wing back. Mm. Like if it keeps changing, they can't have they can't have those chats before the game no. constantly no. and know. I know wh- what you don't like and I'm going to come across and help you in that regard if it keeps changing and everyone's yeah. in different positions Actually, and you don't know it. Yeah. Tommy Walsh obviously one wing back so you, you were until you went full back. Who's, who's, well that maybe used to change was it? Yeah well again which you're kind of getting used to lads as well like you know and, and they're getting used to you too and you have a bit of confidence when you do actually go attack the ball that someone will cover you and that comes with playing games together really more than that and, and talking to each other a lot other, yeah I was look, myself Jackie and Paul Murphy in full back and you so I always talk for maybe 10 minutes before the game to say right if I do this scenario you cover me here and we all knew exactly before we went out in the field what was going to happen if that scenario happened so if Paul Murphy's man beats him you go to him and Jackie goes to your man exactly. and then and there's then a spare man free we have the left half back coming back we'll drop down onto that and you know, we, know we that's, made, that's made, it we made the wing back aware of it this is your job to get back in and cover Jackie's man right. because Jackie's man's going to go and cover the full forward yeah, yeah. I used to go, over, go meet the man coming through that was it Vice versa, on the other side, if Jackie's man would bet we're coming over and Tommy is coming back to cover Paul Murphy's right. man. That very, seems very so simple, simple like, doesn't it? Like, 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 like Everyone knows the role. Yeah. And if you keep it simple, that you don't need to complicate these things at all. It's just covering back. <coughs> Even just making that run, you don't even, might not even have to make that tackle. But if he knows, the defender, or the attacker knows the defender's coming behind him, he'll rush the shot or else he won't get the clean strike in it. Yeah. So make sure and, and, and Borussia Arts get back. Really yeah, or he'll take doing. the point rather than go for yeah. the goal. Yeah. Even a full back, Willie, if we're in the half back line and your full back, the corner back behind you, you want to know if he breaks it, if he catches mm. it. Like what way the ball, he's going to come out and like if he's going to break it, you're going to be under that break all the time. If he's good with his hand, you'll know you don't have to be there, he'll be able to pop it out to you. Right. So you know your movement yeah. before it even happens. And if you're playing with a fella that's behind you, that's never played behind you before, it's very different. You know, yeah, it really is very, very different. You don't know what way he attacks the ball. Is he good at coming out with his hand or is his touch going to be off? Is yeah. he a good striker? You just don't... You have to know all these things, mm. come, especially to our championship. You can yeah. work them out in the league. So I just think it's, it's a huge ask for players to go out there not knowing each other fully. It's hard for a player to make their name as well when there's 10 or 11 different changes on the team. Like yeah. if you had 13 <coughs> or 12 or 13 year starters, you give two or three lads a start in that particular team. Then they're looking around, right, they're all regulars here now. If I play well here now, I'm going to get a chance. And yeah. they have a bit of experience in covering you as well if you do make a mistake. You know, that kind of way. So it's, yeah. it's huge for, for a manager to know their top 11 or 12 players mm-hmm. anyway. You know what I mean? And give the yeah. rest of them a chance with that uh, 10 or 11 players. Surely Dermot O'Sullivan, who played in that great Cork team that you would have played against, surely Dermot O'Sullivan would have done all that stuff he did mm-hmm. on your forwards. Like, I mean, surely he's trying to coach that defence to be smarter and to cover for each other and to be better instinctive defenders mm. you know it is a yeah and again we're, we're in second guessing what's going on either ah, we, we well, don't look, know that's all know that we can that's, do here that's exactly what we're doing but um, look, at, at the moment if he is saying it they don't seem to be going out and doing it and practicing yeah. the game so all we're doing is judging on what we've seen every, every Sunday and at the moment they're they're wicked, wicked open now, and they're going one on one at the moment. Now maybe that might change come championship. Now they might go a six and six rather than a, and a one on one. But a defensive unit, if I was playing in any defensive unit, I'd rather go six and six rather than one on one any day of the week. Hurl your positions for the, as, until you as have this to mark whole group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six. Does I'll get you. Yeah, yeah. If I'm marking fourteen, if he goes out wing forward, right, someone else pick him up. Yeah. I'll pick whoever comes in. You're all I'm in it together, rather exactly, than yeah yeah, 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 yeah. What do you think of what did you make of Galway then, Les? Just to to mention them. Obviously, Joe wasn't playing. They played thirty-one players. You mentioned Shane Kingston played very well, but Gerard McInerney played pretty well yeah. as well. So, like, yeah. I mean, how did you think he did a fullback marking a fella like Kingston? Because that that's obviously the big worry you'd have for someone like Gerard McInerney yeah. is marking and one of these really fast nippy yeah. forwards I thought he did well he actually got turned one time out on the wing now, he gave a free away in the end but he caught him Like he, he, he got back and caught him just missed the ball and caught, caught um, 
Called Kingston. Kingston. Yeah. It was a free, but he showed he a lot of the hands as well. Yeah, he, he, did, yeah, he, he, he showed a lot of pace right. to get back. Hands. So he has pace to, to pace to burn. Mm. Um, Big stride, but, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. I, th- yeah. I think Aina Murphy is really good. But he had a reputation for not having pace. Yeah, I know, but he, but, like, he caught Kingston. Kingston, yeah. Kingston, Kingston yeah. born lad. So, like, Kingston so is it just because you're a big man, people say you're not fast? Yeah. Is that an element yeah. of that yeah. too? Or maybe it's, you're, you're slow over that one or two yards, but uh, once... You catch up. Exactly. Yeah. Once you get that five or six yards going, then, then you show a bit of pace then. Um, Aina Murphy from Puckout, not Galway. Scale has been going route one for the last few years. Hasn't really been working. He was finding men out in the wing. I'd be fine in Park Manion any chance I get because he's yeah. so good with the ball. Like they spoke about uh, his brother, his brother yesterday, but he gives the ball to him all the time. Yeah, he like, does, yeah. <laughs> like he finds him so <laughs> much. Yeah. Like, bit, like gives him about five or six balls a game. And if he's getting on the ball, if you're a half forward midfielder and you create space, you know you're going to get it. And m- so many attacks started from Park Manion yesterday. So like I think the goalkeeping and his puckouts is huge for Galway because they worked the ball out so well yesterday. And even for the first goal, they got a start with Park Manion. To his brother call and then up the pitch and, and took on Cannon and then the finish. So mm-hmm. like so many attacks start from there. So I think they haven't got the, the really good ball winners either in the half hour line. I'd be trying to find men more and more of Galway and that's what they're obviously working well, on. Well they have time. to now, they've yeah, lost absolutely, those absolutely, ball absolutely. winners, right? Mm-hmm. So like I mean that's a, a necessity for them now. Connor Cooney came back into a bit of form yesterday. Mm-hmm. Like I mean he w- he was probably struggling. David Burke got back on the field yeah, as yeah. well, JJ. So a lot of pluses now for Galway. A lot of pluses, yeah. yeah. Going in the right time of the year too. Big game now next weekend against Tip. That'll be, that'll, that'll be that that'll be close to chance. Well, not cl- it'd be yeah, 80, 85 yeah, percent. Yeah, sure. Whereas I'm That's saying a lot of these league games are seventy yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it is it. knockout. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see now what kind of uh, performance you can't really judge him like. Is they're kind of coming under the radar all, all along regarding probably amount of changes after making. But again, the management have to look at every player and giving everyone a chance too. So next Sunday will tell a lot now against uh, against Tipperary. See what kind of um, will Joe be back or not? But I'd like to see the Galway team without Joe now yeah. for our sake next weekend to see if they he's not. Uh, he's not. Uh, he's not back for next weekend. I was right. reading that he's a calf injury. So I could, I could even make this Galway team too. You know the kind of way that you have to send up now and I'd like to Jason Finn getting the chances and uh, yeah. Jason Finn now has been around. Just go for years now, four or five years. You know he has to make. He hasn't been consistently starting on, on this Galway team, no. so he has to come with, come with time now. Either you have to make it or it's just forget about one or the other. You're not going to be mm. so it could be a big year for Jason Flynn. The, the thing with Jason Flynn is he's an f- unbelievable talent, yeah. but he blows so hot and yeah. cold. You can't count on Jason Flynn, no. can you? Or maybe he hasn't gotten... Maybe under, under Michal Donoghue, the minute he didn't play well, he was taken yeah. off. And maybe that got into his head as well, because that can affect confidence. Like the minute you see someone warming up, you yeah. think it's you. And that's no way to yeah. be in any game. Maybe he needs security, because he's potential to be brilliant, lads, in, yeah. th- in, in my untrained like, uh, opinion. It's exactly like you say, Willie. If he gets on a ball quick in a game and scores a point, you'd say he'd score five today. Yeah. Whereas if you don't see him for the first 10 minutes, you're saying he's, it's, it's going to be the fishing rod. And I'd say that's in his head. If he misses a ball straight away, or he doesn't score a score, he should that he's going to be taken off and he's a huge confidence player Like so if he gets a run of games now with Joe missing and he got a great goal the other day and he, he could have got two mm. uh, it could do him the world of good and as you say like, when you're marking him he has all the attributes yeah. he has pace he can finish he's a good he's hand tall as well, yeah, yeah. and he's very tall so like there's no reason why he shouldn't be cleaning up, but it's definitely a confidence issue, Willie, because if he does score early, you, you'll definitely, you, you could be man of the match. Yeah, you know, he's very just, talented. But if you're no marking him, you're saying the opposite. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to let him keep get near a ball. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just keep breaking he looks, away. He looks like a fella that if you sold it into him, he might say, oh, <laughs> that's, that's not for me today, lads. <laughs> you put carton on him there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So what, what about Adrian too? He's an angel. We don't. <laughs> he never no, pull a stroke. Never. Uh, what about Adrian too? He is. He playing up in the forwards, lads. As one of these kind of combative kind of players to set the tone. Like he's cornerback, and I suppose Johnny Cohn has to come back into yeah. that as well. Yeah, no, he's, he's, he has all that. He's very, very good in. He's so quick as well, like you know, and he's very, very comfortable on the ball too. Even as as a cornerback, you see him when he's out attacking the ball. He always goes on with the ball. He saws. He doesn't get rid of it straight away. Yeah. He doesn't panic on the ball. So he, he is able to hurl. And to be fair to him, you know, he got, he got a great score there yesterday again. Now, so he does a lot of work there, I suppose. Yeah. And his legs as well. Uh, legs is a big thing at the moment. You see, any of the games now, you have to be quick and you have to be fast and you have to have a, a big engine now to survive out in uh, in the in the hurling field at the moment. You know that kind of way. So yeah. he has that in abundance at the moment. You know. So yeah. they, look, I suppose they are still a work in progress. Options, Galloway. Yeah, we'll see. All over the field, like, yeah. We'll probably see their their closer to the team he's cheesy. like I said about Cork he really next week Galway could potentially be their last game yeah. mm. 
he has to play the team that he's probably yeah, looking. Do you know, and we'll get yeah. a good idea of what yeah. he's what he's thinking. Yeah, minus Joe, you're going to have minus Joe the starting yeah. team for Galway you know, more more than likely. You know, and yeah. Like they had Aiden Hart starting on the wing yesterday, and he switched before the start of the game back to midfield. I would have been surprised if he started uh, half forward. Mm. And Adrian too, too, he did very well. He's sort of like a Bill Cooper esque player, just throwing himself around up there and causing trouble and creating space for their forwards. And right. the forwards will love that, you know. But it's a good Galway side. It's a good Galway side, Woolly. So like. Um, Placing that forward line are going to be hard. It's if you're cutting one lad out for Joe Canning, it's very hard to see who it's going to be. You know, like because everyone's putting their hand up. Yeah. Well is it, is, isn't it great that after this week we can actually look at a hurling match and go, "This is what they might yeah. be doing this year." Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because yeah. it's I found the last five rounds very frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much chopping and changing. Yeah. It's hard to analyse a game too much. You, yeah. you can talk about teams and what they're trying to do. But you can't actually analyse a game because you think, Asher, you'd be only talking nonsense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, they're making so the bonus of the win the game the last couple, the last few yeah. wins. They're just trying certain things and getting certain things out of the game. Whereas now, come knockout now, obviously next weekend on now, it's going to be knockout for now on. So, yeah, there's something to play for. And a bit of personal pride there for each individual player as well as coming into play there as well. Because you can see, well, any time quarter final stage or semi final stage, you see lads in the dressing room perking up a, sm- a small bit more too, you know. Yeah. And even yeah. as players, you'd be saying to yourselves, lads, let's make sure we have games to play next week rather than being. Don't train. <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah. Like, oh, they've been running around for three weeks. Like, yeah. if we're going on for another two or three weeks, that's two or three weeks of good training, yeah. hooking the ball around and then playing matches rather yeah. than getting ran around the field for three yeah. weeks solid. Like, you know, honestly. Ten like, desperate weeks of boredom. Like, that's, that's a long stint. That's a long stint. That should yeah. be a huge incentive for players, wouldn't yeah. it? Like, you yeah. know, like, more than anything else for me. Like, I mean, the way you look at it as well, wouldn't it, it wouldn't it make more sense with the league to move it on a bit up? Like, for example, the, the team that knocks out misses out in three weeks. Would it not be better just let the top two teams play in a final and be done, you yeah. know, and save weeks yeah. and then one team's not losing out so much yeah. because they yeah. go out early. Ten weeks is mm. desperate stuff altogether, yeah. lads. Yeah. It's nearly like the start of a season, end of a season. Yeah. They're going to start pre-season <laughs> car yeah. car. And the break inside it too, like with the clubs, that's the big thing where yeah. the... You don't have them, yeah. Imagine don't have the look over their players. They don't know what they're doing. They have to trust them when they go back to the clubs and will they get injured playing club games and all that kind of stuff too, you know. So it's a tricky time for the for, for manager. But as I said, once games are, are fixed week in, week out, at least you know you have them there as well. Like, you know, and you know that you could be playing next week. There's a carrot in front of in front of the team every time they play. They could be playing the weekend after again, you know, in the quarterfinal, semifinal and final. Yeah, exactly. Here, come here, just on the Tipperary water for game, because we don't want to talk too much about it. Like Liam Sheedy said, it's March the 1st. There's loads of hurling and training to be done in the meantime on a lot different surface. So, like, it's yeah. true. Like, I mean, there's nothing you can read in. Waterford went down to uh, bloody 13 players and then Tip lost a player. What do you make of Desi Hutchinson, lads? Yeah. Because... He was sensational for um, for Ballygunner. Brilliant. Marking cornerbacks. And we know there is a big step up. How is yeah. he handling himself? Like, I mean, he was underwhelming in the first couple of games, then lost his place yeah. and came back this week. What? Like, his game is all about movement and running across and over yeah. and back mm-hmm. the line. Is it, like, is he... Or is it winter hurling maybe doesn't suit yeah. him that much? Yeah, I, like you seen flashes from yesterday that really impressed me, Willie. Like he's pace, loads of pace. Yeah. He's flying around everywhere in the pitch and you didn't want that in, a, in abundance, that energy around your forward line. Lacked a bit of composure at times, you know, he's so fast to come around the ball and everything's at 100 miles an hour. If he learns to just control that a small bit, I think he'd be a serious player for Waterford yeah. because he has the ability to win the ball, which is the hardest thing in inter-county hurling. He can come out and get a ball. It's just his use then. He just, if he... Get, regain that bit of composure at inter county because you haven't got the time and space that you normally have at club or colleges. Mm. Yeah. If he get, just gets that and learns how to use it properly, he'd be a serious hurler because he has the energy to get around and win ball. So he's the type of player to get on ten balls. You need him scoring three scores from it rather than mm. getting on ten balls and, and not using it properly. Yeah. You know, but if so he learns to do it, yeah. he'd be a huge asset for yeah. Waterford. But does he need more support? I when think he gets more, more time is all, but yeah. to be honest with you. Um, sure, he didn't hurt for a few yeah, years yeah. too. You know, you come back into it and you know you, you said the world of late now with it's club hurling. But he's playing on a dominant team in yeah, Waterford. Yeah, well. you're getting a constant getting supply. A, a lot of supply of the ball in there, whereas now he's probably getting it ma- marked a lot more tighter. But you come, in, I suppose, when the ground hardens up, he'll get quicker, the ball get quicker. So he'll it'll play in his advantage a lot now. But a good option now to, to Waterford to have. But to have legs in that far lane, Fagan is flying on the place. Mikey he's Carney fast, is flying Fagan, isn't he? Hogan is flying. But, ah, but Carney but do was, your head in, lads. He wastes a terrible amount of ball. He's he's so he gets on around the ball. He does. Like, he gets on a lot of ball. phenomenal now, fearsome, you know. But what I liked about him yesterday, now down to 13. It, Kevin Moore was sent off Austin Gleeson you could very easily excuse him to drop the head but they worked very very hard in that game yesterday now and they should have won it there were three long range frees there as well that drove wide and a few, couple of from play that drove wide there as well it, it, and they should, have, they should have won that game yesterday now to be honest looking mm. back on it yeah. I'd say Liam Cal come, come away from it said, right, Conor Prunty was very very good full back 
a lot of lads got. He did a great hit on Callan, didn't did, he? Yeah, oh, he timed that lovely, yeah. Brilliant. Jamie Barron was brilliant midfield. Yeah. Gleason done well when you back centre back there as well. Parky Manning done okay. And the lads worked very, very hard to top the up the up front of the five. They were probably five against six and five against or four against six there for Hoyler as well. So they were absolutely they worked very, very hard and didn't drop yeah. the head now. So I'd say Liam Carney would be happy enough coming. We'd get from Manny like. and Barron to just hover around with Carney when he gets the ball yeah. because they'll it. finish it. He, he, like he, he gets on so much ball I'm yeah. saying lads used to the second he gets that ball give him an option and you give it to him mm. <laughs> you give it to one of them because yeah. they'll finish it no he's industrious I don't yeah, want to be yeah. too so hard on no, him but no, he, he, t- he's, he gave he, a few he, great balls to Baron yesterday yeah. just coming past him on his shoulder and yeah, so yeah. much trouble maybe his shooting, well. is, his shooting is poor then I think, I think that's just that little bit of composure again when he mm. went on the ball the shooting's not great so I just I have him on my team all day long but just have players who can shoot around them around him, off sure. shoulder all the time to, to, that, that's the name. Fagan looks like a good player Did yeah. he, was he a transfer from Mead somebody said to me I'm not too sure mm-hmm. um, but um, I'll have to confirm that but like I mean the, the whole thing is you wonder about Waterford are they going at 90% and Tip going at 70 you know what I mean because yeah. yeah. last year they made the league final we yeah. don't know but mm. it, it on the fa- on the face of it, it does look like they're working hard for each other. Yeah. And they well, are. need to go at that that pace now. Always, always. that's always. Their, yeah. They have to go at that pace. You know, Bennett was unbelievable. He mm. was all over the field. Now he's a handful. He took on three or four tip forwards in, or backs in in the yeah. first half and just split straight through him. They had to, to pull him down near the end. He's going to be a handful. He gave. He came out the field, did he? he Is he field. better out the field than he in worked, there? He worked very, very hard now as well. Yeah. In fairness to me, he's down in the full back thing, picking up ball and he's on the half wall and pick up the ball. I think it was a case of he had to. Because they were down to 13 men, yeah. he had to come out the field. And but he's a boomer of a shot. Why, yeah. waste, why waste that in a full forward? slap of a ball. Yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's a ball winner, though, will he? Mm. Like if you, if he's you, not great at catching uh, ball. No, but just, you don't have to be great at catching the ball. He's so good even just coming in, mm. getting it in front of him. And once he has it in front of him, he's so good at coming on to it. Right. I wouldn't really want him working the socks off way out the pitch because you need him scoring inside. And sometimes when you're working so hard out there, you haven't got the energy or the fitness yeah. levels yeah. to do both. What, what have you said to Bennett? You just follow Mikey Carney. Yeah. I'll go to, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mikey Shaw, Every, yeah. Everyone follow Mikey Carney. <laughs> do ex- play challenge yeah. matches in training where you tie a rope around yeah. Bennett <laughs> and <laughs> Carney <laughs> and you <laughs> follow him, right? Yeah, well, Mikey, don't shoot. We could, yeah, be, on, don't shoot. We could yeah. be onto something here. Mikey Carney's going to be cursed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll leave it there. We'll come back with performance of the weekend. Performance of the weekend. We're going to start with Owen Cody, who scored one eight um, against Leash. Um, he got man of the match on local radio. He got his goal from a penalty. He got six frees, two from play. Centre half forward, which mm. was interesting, and um, captain for the day. Also interesting it was just Mullen wing back, who he trumped obviously for captaincy. Yeah. So I don't know what kind of thought went into that, but that's interesting. And he could be the kind of X factor that now that Adrian Mullen is gone, yeah. that he, he could they could need one Cody now. Yeah, could, interesting yeah. to see him play centre forward, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, he's um, he kind of more like corner forward for Ballyhale or yeah. Will, but again, he could do the same impact that Adrian Mullen had on, on Kenny last year. You know, he's he's big kind of big young chap as well, and he's well able to win his own ball, which is a big that's what Cody right. Cody loves. You know, he's high ball in, he got a point against Clare as well, and high ball came in, he won it and he slapped it over the bar. So no, he's plenty hurling. I think I like to see him out there now as well, get a bit of confidence going there as well. And he's out around the, the mix of it too. So young guy as well, and he's fit and he's after winning every no, underage over the last couple, yeah. of, well, every mid Valley Hale over the last couple of years. So his confidence will be through the roof there as well. Like you know, even. It's great little touch for him to captain again as well, like you yeah. know what I mean. And then he responded too. You can show some people now kind of shrink under that kind of small bit of pressure there as well. First game out, start Michael Kenny, then you're captain. But then he goes off and man of the match, you know. So yeah, bright bright pro- prospect now with with, with, with Ballyhill and hopefully Kenny as well. Yeah. So that's the thing. Like obviously Adrian Mullen's gone, uh, Michael, and like could, would it be madness to put TG out in the wing? He can play there. It's no, just no it wouldn't be madness at all because he's so good at winning the ball. Mm. Like he'd like to isolate himself out there, just let poke the ball down. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm confident enough to win this, so like he, he could easily play out there, and they'd feed off each other as well. If two big men are good under a high ball, they'd, mm. they'd be under each other's breaking ball as well. So right. definitely an option. Would he? Like he, he's played there for years, so we'd be no problem to him. But look, it's great. I think the response to being captain is the big thing. That's a lot of pressure on the young man's shoulders, yeah. like going out captain and and in a new position for the team and to stand up like that it would do his confidence a world of good. And lads will respond to that saying, Jesus, this fella could be a yeah. future leader for us, you know. So I think it's a great, great thing for Kenny. Right, okay, that's an interesting one. Jamie Barron lads, ah look, they're, 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 you can't play him anywhere else other than me. He's a midfielder yeah, he's and he's just natural, a sensational, isn't he? Yeah, he just flies around the place. I'd say his stats for covering ground must be Unreal, through yeah. the roof, I'd say. He's a phenomenal player and great touch as well. And 
he just hits the ball and he goes again. Hits the ball, goes yeah. again. He just doesn't rest in his laurels. He he always wants the ball back again. He just he, he's not happy to just get the ball and get rid yeah. of it. He wants it back again. You know, what I mean, it's a great sign of a player too. But a big leader for what for yesterday. Yeah, his skill levels are very underrated too because he is always buzzing around <laughs> and he doesn't often miss when he shoots either. No, he's, he's brilliant going forward. You can see how much he loves it, Willie. And he's always. Marked a marked man for Waterford, so he's doing this while being marked. But it's because his timing's so good, run through the middle, and they always give it to him. Like when yeah. he goes by that yeah. half forward line, they will always give it to him. And he's just so effective. Lads just can't catch him, you know. And it, he head down, he's bullish. You know, <laughs> he is bullish for them, yeah. and, like a real leader for them. So like, you can't play him anywhere else because he can get away from players in the middle. Whereas yeah. if he marked, it's more difficult to up the pitch to come back and then do that run. You know, so yeah. I think he's so good at coming from deep for Waterford. Mm. And he's so crucial for them, but. Whoever's playing against them have to, <laughs> like you have to put one man on just to sacrifice your game, like, like you a wing back. You have to because but he does just too, just too much damage. He'd run anyone into the ground. Yeah. Though. Yeah. <laughs> no, I wouldn't want yeah, no. <laughs> But you remember the goal he scored in extra time against Kilkenny? Yeah, yeah. Like, how Straight is he still going yeah. at flew that down level? Down yeah. Flew down the middle yeah. in the extra time and sprints back. Then you see, That's yeah. <laughs> he gets the goal and sprints back <laughs> out the pitch like it's nothing. There's a psychology to that. Exactly. So like, I mean, they go for everyone. Yeah, because it was Brian Fenton. I remember was one of the leash players running after. Him and he ran, followed him the whole way down under the Cusick stand and he cut in and he hand passed it off and it was a point and the leash fellow went down on his knees he was he wrecked sent him <laughs> yeah. three, yeah. qu- three quarter pace back out to the midfield <laughs> give me like, the ball again how fit could this lad be <laughs> yeah. but then he went and had a breather and a sneaky <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah yeah but there probably is that psychology yeah. of just never letting on that you're yeah. just oh, let, putting it into the other lad's head you that you're, yeah. that you're yeah. just completely on you another level you could be a bit sorry you could be a bit I think Shane can on getting the shoulder he took it very well but you could see him oh yeah taking a breath not going to show this oh lads he was broke up and he did he stood up fair yeah. play to him no, but he, he did. did he tried to disguise yeah. it yeah. He did. you can see him taking, yeah. taking he, that big breath like oh. he had one hand on the hip <laughs> <laughs> oh he really got him oh, yeah, no, brilliantly. But, oh, I did appreciate Callan's efforts yeah. at disguising no it more like, or, <laughs> 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 he did disguise it yeah David McInerney that's four points from play yeah. right now they scored 27 but like I mean we know what David McInerney I, we had him on the show here and I was calling him McAlealy like <laughs> is that your role he says look there's no it's not it wasn't actually really discussed that he yeah. does the holding and to- to release Tony. Yeah. And, like, I mean, we know he's combative. We, he's actually a speed demon as well. Mm-hmm. He's really fast. If he had scoring to his midfield, like, Clare are a team that we'll talk about, um, you talk about experimenting and all that. They kind of know a lot of their team yeah. already. They've used the league to go, right, players know where... 12 of the team, yeah. you know, have yeah. a good idea wh- yeah. what Brian is thinking. And... She says, I don't know what a new manager. I'd be more of the line. Mick O'Dwyer took us over in 03. He, we knew the team pretty much yeah. throughout that league. Yeah. Like He didn't come in saying, I'm going to try a whole lot of lads and end up in the middle of yeah. nowhere for yeah. championship. He went, I know 12 or 13 of my team yeah. and I'm going to see how good they are for yeah. the championship. And the ch- I would say the first round league game was the same as the first round championship oh, yeah. game, bar one or two players. Yeah, yeah. Is that not the smarter way to go? Yeah, it's, it's a big thing for a new manager to come in, so the, you get, especially you get a couple of wins in your belt, mm-hmm. it's using for the players to buy in to what he, the new manager is doing as well. So Brian, in fairness to him, he made a few changes, but he, he knew, I'd say he was just thinking over the Christmas what he was going to do. And That's he, it. He, well, he's the advantage of, of being from Clare. Yeah, yeah the huge thing. Like, yeah, and looking at the Clare team over the last three or four or five years, he probably has his own opinions on actually how to play. Yeah. And he's transferring them out onto the team now as well. And he's given Dave McNerney a new lease of life now. Personally, himself, I've been on record here before. I'd rather see him centre back, to be honest with you. But um, he's hurt him very, very well there. And he will get forward, but he will defend now as well. Like, you know, so yeah, they're going well. And. Uh, they're putting their own he's in fairness to Brian he's putting his own stamp on it now and he's not afraid to, to make changes and he has options there as well which is a huge huge thing that's it so you're looking at uh, Kieran Kingston yeah he should have been looking at the last two years going well I know what he's ready mm. I have my team yeah. I'm sticking with this I know what I'm doing Shane O'Neill and Galway then obviously wouldn't have known those players yeah. all that well you can understand why he's yeah. chopping yeah. and changing so like I mean You'd be almost more critical of Kieran Kingston based off what, based on what Brian Lone has does has been doing. You're watching these lads. You're from that county. Yeah. If I was to take over Leash in the morning, you'd, you'd have thirteen lads where you'd be thinking, oh, yeah. that that would be my yeah. team. So you're mm. picking it in pubs for the last. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. talking with you amongst your friends. Well, he's much better there. Or, and you'd give it a league to see. Maybe well, I hope I'm right. Yeah. You know, yeah. maybe three players. You'd be saying to yourself, "Well, you're just three positions up here for yeah, ground. yeah." Not changing a whole t- forward line or whole back line. Because yeah, you need that stability come championship. For Dave McInerney, for Clare midfield, like Tony Kelly's been going to be the marked man all the time, so he's going to have that freedom. 
midfield, he's not going to be the one that's closely watched. Now, he might be a bit more now, but I know Dublin put a marker on Tony Kelly wherever he went yesterday and he got a point from play. But it allowed freedom for David McNair to get yeah. on the pitch and get on scores. So he's going to enjoy that partnership a lot more. And if he starts scoring more, it might take a bit pres- more pressure off Tony because they'll have to start watching him as well. So right. I, I, think it's a, I think it's a great partnership. I think it's really good. I don't think, uh, Pallor Connor is an excellent centre-back. He's great at reading the game. So like that will suit Clare. He just gets across that line and pops it around and gives the easy ball all the time. So I think I think Brian Owen's done a fantastic job so far. Yeah, he seems to again. You'd have to put the kind of caveat on that. Are Clare hitting these league games at a higher level yeah. than other teams? Yeah, you know, yeah. you don't know well, because time will tell, like time will that, tell yeah. in the championship. Um, that was interesting, actually. I meant to say to you, uh, Mick, is that Davy Fitz was saying last week that you know his running game and running off the yeah. ball that the Dublin players were doing an awful lot of checking that, almost like football style. Yeah. Do you know, like, I mean, is that something you would have noticed with Dublin, that they're getting in lads' faces and stopping these runs? Or is that just... Davey just referenced Dublin, but he said it happens his team a lot. Okay. Because, like, their half-back line takes off without the ball yeah. and their markers are just trying to block those runs. No, I've seen, I've seen a lot from the Dublin forward line of, like, the second they go to a man, it's, it's the hand on the chest. And it's a very football thing to do, you know. That's what they, every one of them to a man has done it. All the games I've watched, they've come out straight away and they're doing this. No matter who's on the ball or where the ball is. So it might be mentality, like, Maddie Kenny's way of playing is off the ball. So if he's so good at playing it, he'll know what stops it, mm. you know. And that's well, how Coolan won the All-Ireland, too. off the ball running non-stop. Mm. So if he's looking at a team like Wexford, he knows yeah. how to counter it. Yeah. You know, he's so good at doing it himself, yeah. he'll know what will stop that. So I'd say that's just an element of that, yeah. he's so good at doing it himself. Yeah, so. David did reference Dublin, he yeah. says they were stopping runs all over yeah. the field. That's well, aware of your opposition as yeah. well, though, in fairness. Yeah. You have to give Matty a bit of credit there as well, yeah. like, you know, because... Sure, one time you're saying that Sean Murphy is flying up the field and Paddy Foley are flying up the field, even mm. the cornerbacks are going to the field getting scores. And obviously, they're stopping that at source, you know what I mean? If you can't run up the field, now they're going to check their runs. Yeah, sure, it makes sense. And like. you can't even do the Kevin Moore and Dig now <laughs> to <laughs> stop that. So, like, I mean, <laughs> but it, it is Please something, don't run up the field. It is, yeah, it, but it, it is something, though, lads, that it's a bit of an eyesore in Gaelic football in that. When players are trying yeah. to catch up with the play, you'll see the other player turned around, faced him, pushing him in the yeah, chest. And he ca- yeah. it, it looks terrible. It's and not going to be caught either. Like, you wouldn't you know like it mean? to come into hurling because it's going on three years now in Gaelic yeah. football and linesmen still aren't calling it. Yeah. You can't yeah. send it off because it's a push. It's not yeah. like, like yeah. unless someone goes it's to ground, it's, 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 it's not a free. You yeah, know, exactly. But it's an eyesore, lads. Absolutely. You know, and if if hurling's becoming more of that running game and yeah. if you started seeing players doing that because they'd yeah. have a hurling that could potentially yeah. you know, stop yeah. it with the hurl yeah. it would be terrible but uh, Dylan Quirk lads he got five um, from play um, he was all over the field yeah. like he got a whole lot of different types <laughs> yeah. of, of, of uh, points I haven't heard of Dylan Quirk you might laugh at me mm. now should I have heard of him or where? what's his uh, I, I background I didn't know too much from him no either they no, no. Uh, the four score was the pick of the bunch Jeez, yeah. it was a great score like out, out in the wing under pressure like he couldn't have been further closer to the sideline and over the bar and it's the confidence he showed on the ball we spoke about composure earlier William. he looks like he's playing playing the game years mm-hmm. because he was he was surrounded by three or four lads at different times in the games and managed to get out of that quite easily and take the score at the same time so right. that, 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 that's what really impressed me and if you're keeping the likes of Jake Morris and all out of the team who was the new up and coming lad and he came on at midfield because obviously it's getting tougher and tougher to get into that full forward line so like, he definitely came out with a statement there and I liked his interview after. I like, did too. Yeah, it was, it was honest and just yeah. like saying as it is, there was no bluffing or anything. You know? yeah. so I, thought, that, he that spoke, was I thought he spoke very well yeah. and he said something along the lines of, well, I've been training hard all winter now I just was waiting for my chance. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, think yeah. of the poor backing fella. Himself back, yeah. yeah, backing himself yeah. and training hard, wanting to get in then gets in in a big game at Turles yeah. and scores five. Yeah, you know yeah. more the man can do. You got two, a great, a great start. You got two points in the first ten minutes. I say, right, give me the ball yeah. as much as conference. The more we're talking with Jason Finn as well. Like you know, what I mean, forwards love a couple of area scores getting into the game, and you have two points after ten minutes in the game. You the rest of the game to play. You know what I mean? You're, you're on bo- in bonus territory there anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're, you're going to hurt well anyway when you have the two points scored. You know, but he was looking for the ball, and as I said, it's it, different scores. It wasn't always the same score he was getting to, and he's winning his own ball, running at the defenders there as well. So yeah, it could. It's a work in progress for him, but he's a great star for him. He's another sure. option. He's yeah, definitely yeah, another yeah. option. We're waiting he looks to see. very physical as well, in fairness to him. Like, Big yeah. enough, yeah. And mm. he then says uh, Waterford had won four on the trot. I like that statement on the <laughs> trot. Um, I think he got it wrong. They had won three, <laughs> three, on, yeah. three on the trot or something like that. So, yeah, Dylan Quirk um, is in the mix. Stephen Bennett, who I've criticised a lot on the show here, he's definitely in the mix yeah. as well. He scored 1 1 and was probably showed up as being a bit of a leader for yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Instead of being this young lad coming up, 
someone else does it he was taking on responsibility yeah. and even took the free late short so you try and work a goal himself yeah. you yeah. know take on yeah. that responsibility maybe the easiest thing there would be tr- to try the shot that's never going to score yeah. are yeah. you really like no. I mean it usually hits a fella <laughs> two else. metres yeah. before the yeah. goal yeah. Um, he deserves it anyways but I think I'm going to give oh yeah Cahill Mannion but you're not giving him credit because his brother gives him the ball all the time. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just, I, I just say sort of thing with my brother on the pitch. He, he just have that understanding. We saw, yeah, yeah. but he just gives him the ball. He must give him five or six balls to get yeah. easy but in space. You do know? you know what though? Like how many times have we complained on the show about half backs not? given that yeah, little yeah, ball yeah, yeah. and just because they're brothers he's still doing the right thing you're not criticising yeah, here no, you're just saying it's no, funny the way really he does it it's brilliant because it does make sense give it to a fellow who's a better playmaker yeah. he'll take it on and he'll give a nice drilled little ball yeah. into the forwards yeah, so it yeah. makes sense though doesn't oh, it when you see sense, it being yeah. done like that especially the hands that Cotton Manion has he's brilliant on the ball like, you know, yeah. right or left he never, never misses the ball and yeah. scored a pointer yesterday now against the wind from 65 yards out so he just flicked it straight over the bar and had plenty of behind the goal as well like you know he's a great, yeah. great player ah, he's a Rolls Royce of a player yeah, he's brilliant isn't he brilliant. just the way he carries himself on so the field so casual yeah. Like. Yeah, always he, has time in the ball as well yeah. like, you know you never seem to be under pressure like. yeah. I mean, it's just jinx he kind of kind of throws out the ball and then jinx he went for a hook He'd make an idiot of. Uh, he'd stay so going, yeah. Like, you know, his head's always so, his up. Balance, his balance Whereas with Flynn, I see sometimes his head's looking at the ball on the mm-hmm. hurl. Whereas Mannion has the ball on the hurl and he's looking, looking still around, looking yeah. where am I going to pass it, where am I going to pass it. So maybe like Flynn could learn a, a thing or two just, just to have that head up a bit more while you're running with the ball because it just opens the game up more. You don't have to make that decision in that split second as the ball goes up. You know, you have yeah, the decision yeah. made before you even throw the ball up. So Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. I'm going to give a uh, performance of the weekend to Dylan Quirk. Five from yeah. play. Um, I was pretty sure that was his debut um, in Thurless and gave a nice little interview afterwards so hopefully he'll win a few more on the trot um, as he <laughs> as he likes to as he likes to say so yeah performance of the weekend goes to Dylan Quirk congratulations and that's it we'll be back on Thursday and we'll preview sure the two week or the, just the two games next weekend mm-hmm. isn't it before yeah. it's supposed to be a free weekend yeah. Jess there's two weekends so we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you on Thursday before those two good luck